Hello again. Um, when I first started reading the Bible, some time ago now, my intention at that time was that I was going to read the whole thing. I mean, I didn't want to miss anything. And the reason for that was that I wanted to be in a position where if somebody said to me, have you read the Bible? I could say, yes, I've read the Bible. And if they then said to me, oh, which bits have you read? I could say, no, I've read the Bible. Well, you've read the whole thing? Yes, I've read the whole thing. You sad bastard. Which is probably how it will pan out if anybody ever asks. And I've pretty much done that now. And, uh, I mean, despite the fact that there were certain parts that were really difficult to get through. You know, things like the construction of the bloody tabernacle, for example. You know, things like that, which were just nothing more than page after bloody page of tedious, tedious, tedious description. You know, I remember wading through that and, you know, getting so far and thinking, Come on, you know, when's this ever going to bloody end? And then eventually getting to the end of it and being so bloody relieved. Thank God for that, you know, thank goodness for that. And, uh, and then suddenly having it dawn on me that I still didn't know what this bloody thing looked like. You know, and having to Google it. Like two seconds later, I've got a picture. Oh, that's the bloody tabernacle. Shit, that would have saved me three hours of reading. So things like that were really tough to get through. And also the genealogies as well, which, as you know, the genealogies are nothing more than a big list of names. You know, so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so. And uh, I remember reading one of these genealogies once and getting to somewhere like, you know, the 20th name and then suddenly stopping myself in my tracks and going, why am I reading this? Why am I reading this? I mean, like I'm going to remember more than the first fucking three tomorrow. You know, by next week, I'm not going to know any of them. Why am I reading this? So I kind of skimmed those a little bit after that. But you do have to be fair to the Bible. It does try to be complete, and it does try to name everyone, not just in the genealogies, but in general, it does give everyone a name. I mean, actually, there are a few people that are not named. I'm going to come back to those in a minute, one in particular. But of those that are named, of which there are many, um, it's unbelievable. I mean, they name even the tiniest bloody little rat farmer, you know, if such a thing should exist. But, you know, I mean, everybody, people that don't even get so much as a bloody bit part in the plot get a freaking name. However, there is this one character in particular in the Bible who isn't named. And he's from the book of Exodus. And what I'm going to do... Now, some of you will know exactly where this is going now. So, for those of you who think you know, you, you'll probably... Yeah, this is easy for you now. But for those of you that don't, I'm going to give you five seconds to guess which character you think I'm referring to. As I say, he's from the book of Exodus. Certainly plays a big part there anyway. And uh, your five seconds start now. Okay, so did you get it? Because the character I'm referring to is, of course, the Pharaoh of the Exodus. And you have to ask yourself, why wasn't this Pharaoh named? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, surely it wasn't an oversight on God's part. I mean, we know this. Because God doesn't shut up talking about this bloody Pharaoh all the way through the Old Testament. Every opportunity he gets to shoehorn in another mention of how he helped free the Israelites from slavery, he takes it. You know, there's Joshua one day, minding his own business, and suddenly God comes down and... What are you doing there, Joshua? What? Oh, I'm just laying this new carpet I've had delivered. Delivered, eh? Kind of reminds me of the time when I helped deliver the Israelites from the clutches of the Egyptian... From, oh, shit. Not that story again. Come on, play another tune, you know. And then 7,000 chapters later in the book of Isaiah or something... Uh, what are you doing there, Isaiah? What? Oh, I'm just drinking some milk. I've just been down to the shops. I had to use up some free milk coupons. Free, eh? Kind of reminds me of the time when I helped free the Israelites from the... Oh, shit, not again! Come on! You know, and on it went. And uh, and this must have been really confusing from the point of view of the scribes who had to write this stuff down. I mean, in fairness, Moses supposedly wrote the first five books anyway. And that's a bit weird, because you get to the end of Deuteronomy, which is Moses' last book, you know, and he, it says something along the lines of, you know, and Moses died and was buried under a fish tank behind a tree in a valley somewhere where nobody will ever find him, you know. And you can imagine God kind of transcribing this down and Moses kind of going, do you know what, Lord? There are times when you can just have too much fucking information, you know. <laughs> maybe somebody else should be writing this bit. You know, have a bit of heart. Uh, so maybe somebody else did write that bit, but whoever it was, um, when God was kind of transcribing the, all these stories down and he mentions this Pharaoh, you know, you can imagine this scribe there going, uh, which Pharaoh, Lord? What? Uh, which Pharaoh? We're going to need a name. 
Oh, well, uh, <clears throat> uh, oh, I forget now, it was a while ago. Uh, uh, just put Pharaoh, no, nobody will mind. Oh, I think they might, you know, we've named everybody else. <clears throat> oh, well, uh, let me think. It was, um, oh, yes, it was Pharaoh, um, uh, Slaverdurbidum. You can't go putting bloody Pharaoh Slaverdurbidum. Not unless you can spell it anyway. Come on, give me a name. <clears throat> well, it was, um, oh, yes, uh, Pharaoh Slaverdurbidum. Yeah, now, come on, Lord, speak up a bit. You know, I really need to nail something down here. No, I'm saving all that for the New Testament. Yes. You know, and also, uh, the other thing that uh, I was thinking about is that, you know, from the point of view of the prophets and the kings, all the people that God kind of boasted about this story to, not one of these bloody prophets, not one of these kings at any point says to God, Which Pharaoh, Lord? Of which Pharaoh do you speak? I'm curious. I'd like to know. Not fucking one! They all just go, Oh, Pharaoh, right, gotcha, you know. That's it! What kind of sense is there in that? No bloody curiosity whatsoever. So why wasn't this pharaoh named? Well, that is a really big question mark. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, really low-flying question mark as well. Um, but I'm going to give you another five seconds to guess why this pharaoh wasn't named. And I'm pretty sure some of you are going to come up with a good answer. Even the theists might get this one. I'll give you five seconds starting now. Okay, so let's examine this all a little more closely now. What I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you are writing a book of an historical nature. And that this book is going to contain some really big events. Things like the parting of the Red Sea. And the ten plagues. And the wandering of the Jews in the desert for 40 years. And, you know, you've got a pharaoh there that happens to own magicians that can magically turn sticks into snakes. Things like this. If these events and happenings just happen to be true then fine, you can name that pharaoh, because history will bear you out. However, if these events just happen to be a complete and fucking utter work of fiction, you dare not name that bloody pharaoh, you're going to get caught out. You know, they would have known even in those days that the Egyptians kept immaculate records. Shit, I mean, the Egyptians inscribed bloody everything. Everything that didn't have a pulse had a bloody hieroglyph on it. You know, and probably some things that did. Yeah, although technically that's probably called tattooing, but you know what I mean. So you don't name that pharaoh. You've got to leave it in the mists a little bit. Let them chase their bloody tail, which is what the scholars end up doing. And the reason they chase their tail on this and never get a real answer is because it doesn't fit with any of the bloody pharaohs. You know, the events just don't fit with what's going on or what went on in those particular pharaohs' lives. And this also makes you wonder about some of the kings as well. You know, I know that many of the kings of the Bible did exist. You know, fair enough. But have you noticed that the more famous the king, the more wealthy the king, the more the king had involvement in biblical plots and miracles, the less bloody proof there is that those kings existed. You know, as soon as you get to really big kings like bloody King Solomon and King David, suddenly you've got fuck all. You've got squat. There's no proof whatsoever. Okay, you get these odd scholars who kind of chase around, scrabbling around archaeologically, and, you know, they find a rock which has got the words, David was here on it, you know, oh, yeah, there's proof, you know, that proves he existed. Yeah, right, you know, this is the kind of proof they're offering as, as uh, serious evidence. It's all nonsense. I mean, I know there are lots of people who do believe, you know, the likes of Kent Hovind and these people that, you know, the uh, Bible is a real serious book of an historical nature. But me, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a book of a bloody hysterical nature. But there you are. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.